About a month ago, I did a video on using a no-name antenna switcher as part of a pan adapter setup. That allows a ham operator to enjoy the big scope and waterfall displays found on many new HF transceivers, even if they have an older non-display type rig. In that video, I tried to be somewhat software agnostic and provide you with the basic connections you'll need to make this all happen. Since then, several viewers offered comments about some easier connections built into the software I was using in that video. I also exchanged comments with another viewer who took the cover off the antenna switcher and discovered an interesting option in how it can be configured. With those things in mind, it's time to add to the previous video. Before we do, if you find this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. First, let's take a look at the antenna switcher. It's available on Amazon and a bunch of eBay sellers. As I mentioned before, it comes with no instructions. Using a comment from Larry, K0HIO, who opened the box and discovered what I'm calling Mode 1 and Mode 2 jumper, I found the Mode 2 setting was a better choice for me. The circuit board calls Mode 1 normal operations and Mode 2 dual receive operations. Here are a couple of photos inside the antenna switcher that show what I'm describing. It seems that the two LED lights on the front indicate which receivers are getting signals. In Mode 1, only the green light is lit, indicating the SDR receiver is selected. This means that the transceiver's receiver is not getting a signal. You might have noticed that in my first video that in Mode 1, the red LED came on when I keyed the transceiver's mic. As a result, when the switcher was in the antenna line, there was no sound coming from the transceiver. This made using WSJTX impossible, as there was nothing for the software to decode. When I switched the jumper to Mode 2 by opening the circuit between the two pins, both the green LED and the red LED lit. And the transceiver's audio output was again coming from my transceiver speaker. Another viewer commented that HDSDR has a simpler built-in way to talk to Ham Radio Deluxe, which is what I was using as my rig control software. This other than by using OmniRig. Again, my original goal was to not focus on specific software, but this method is so much easier that it's worth commenting on. So, if you're using Ham Radio Deluxe for rig control and HDSDR for your SDR software, you'll be interested in what we're about to talk about. Other rig control software may work the same way, but you'll have to explore that yourself. Ken posted a comment with some other options for connecting HDSDR to Ham Radio Deluxe. What I found was the easiest is simply going into the HDSDR software, clicking the Options button, and then selecting the DDE to HDSDR option. When this dialog box opens up, make sure you select HRD for Ham Radio Deluxe. Click OK and HDSDR is now connected to Ham Radio Deluxe. I have my CAT cable connected to my Yaesu FT450D's 9-pin RS-232 style connector and my USB port on my laptop. With the DDE connection from HDSDR established, I'm able to use the HDSDR to change bands, change modes, and frequencies 
without dealing with either Ham Radio Deluxe or my FD450D. I still use Ham Radio Deluxe for things like power settings and the other radio specific adjustments, but for normal operations, my HDSDR display is perfect. By changing from mode 1 to mode 2, my transceiver's receiver was again active and WSJTX worked like a champ. As you can see in the photo, when not transmitting, both LEDs are lit. A one-page instruction on a seller site would certainly have made this easier to figure out, especially when the jumper was hidden in the box and behind silver warranty tape. When I want to go to WSJTX, I simply close HDSDR, unplug the SDR dongle from my laptop, and plug in the line from my Signalink USB sound card. My rig control selection in WSJTX is Ham Radio Deluxe. Again, band selection in WSJTX is sent to the FT450D. I'm using an NFED multiband antenna, so I usually have to retune between bands. Speaking of tuning, I also have an external antenna tuner in line with the antenna after the antenna switcher. So, there's the update. If you're using the software apps, I think you'll find your pan adapter set up using the no-name switcher will be an easy-to-use addition to your shack. Again, if you found the video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Please feel free to comment and add to the conversation. Thanks for watching 73.